Ah, boleh? Nampak tak? Nampak. Uh, Kesel saya gerak diikut tak? Ah, uh, ikut. Okey, okey. Okey lah. So Zoom ni uh, nak tanya dia tak ada limit masa kan macam yang free Zoom tu? Ah uh, tak, yang ni kita uh, punya YouTube yang punya account. Ah uh, okey okey baik baik. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So kita tunggu pukul 10 kot. Ha ah uh, okey. Okey okey. Alright. Okey, terima kasih. Faisal. Ya saya. Kita ada student macam macam ni lah. Macam saya punya student ni. Anis ni. Dia dah nak habis PhD. Okay. Kalau kita nak bagi dia experience dekat ST macam mana. Kita boleh macam internship. Tapi mana tak adalah perlu bayar apa. Kita dah sebab kita ada bayar dia sebagai allowance dia kat sini. Oh. Kita nak serap macam mana. Kita, ada cara tak? Dia, dia macam mana intention universiti dia nak buat macam research ke nak ha, nak buat? bagi bagi experience je lah bagi exposure oh. dekat dekat industri sebab macam kalau sudah undergrad kan kita ada LI ha. tapi student PhD mana ada LI oh memang tak ada pun kan jadi <laughs> tapi kita nak bagi dia actual experience dekat industri tu kan hmm. kalau kita nak bagi dia masuk macam division tak salah division R&D ke division FA ni ke at least dia, oh. dia faham the real actual industrinya problem kan kira macam internship lah tapi macam tapi bukan juga. bukan ha. undergrad lah ha betul oh. so maybe okay. boleh emailkan saya resume dulu kot saya review dulu tengok dia punya focus ha. research kat mana so ha. saya boleh purpose lah dekat Uh, masa saya department yang yang berkaitan lah. hmm. Sebab Jadi, eh? dia kena align lah takut uh. takkan dia nak pergi kat tempat yang new kan So hmm. tak boleh hmm. tak, tak Masa saya tak advantage lah sih Selain <coughs> dia nak bagi benda ada facility yang dia dah pernah guna kat sini kan hmm. Macam kalau basic ni macam SAM apa semua tu hmm. Ada lah dia guna kat sini hmm. SAM, AFM semua tu ada ada ni mesin baru kat sana SRD je. Ah SRD pun kita ada. Oh. Okey. SRD a uh, yang baru ah kita ada uh, nano indentation untuk check hardness of a thin film pun ada. Oh. Ada lain pada AFM. Nano scale lah selain pada oh. AFM untuk check topografi. Topografi okey. Mechanical property dia. Oh. Ha, so untuk tahu mechanical property kita pakai nano indentation. 
Hmm. Uh, so mechanical at nano scale punya indentation. So hmm. uh, quite good lah. Hmm. Lepas tu apa? Uh, contact angle measurement. Pun ada. Uh, itu kita orang tengah apply ISO sekarang ni. Hmm. Angle measurement. ISO 7025. Lab accreditation. Sirim. Oh. Uh, so quite okay lah kalau boleh dapat sirim tu kan nanti. Okay. Hmm. So, so period of time tu ada ni. <laughs> macam intern tu. Ha. Kurang kurang 3 bulan. Tapi kita uh, depend juga lah pada tak kisah pun oh. industri you know. <laughs> boleh offer dalam 3 bulan tu kuat. Banyaklah boleh belajar kan. Hmm. Hmm. Kalau 6 bulan tu uh, possible juga tak? 6 bulan, 6 bulan hmm. pun possible lah tapi kalau <laughs> allowance apa? <laughs> allowance kita kalau, kita kalau, 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 kalau ini <laughs> Dah dua bulan je. Uh, tak. Tiga. Ah, ni tak dengar. Muted. Oh okey. Enam bulan macam okey okay juga kot. Lama yeah. sikit lah. Hmm. Sebab enam bulan tu uh, what ST practice lah. Tapi untuk in, oh. internship lah. Okay. Dan kita, kita, memang kita bayar bulan-bulan lah sebab ada specific project dengan at the end kena, memang kena present dengan GM lah. Oh. Ha, Minyak okay juga. Cuma level hmm. awak PhD kan so ni something new lah So kita kena hmm. kena discuss lah sebab last experience ada seorang Daripada UTEM kan Prof hmm. dia, dia memang PhD hmm. Dari PhD dia assign ke ST uh, tu lama satu tahun Oh uh, dia macam memang... industry attachment lah tu Ah uh, tu industry attachment hmm. Itu memang duduk kat, duduk kat ni ST lah uh, Setiap hari duduk ST tapi dia uh, rotation Uh, dua bulan, ni akan pergi semua di Pakman lah I see Memang projek dia lengkap lah satu manufacturing oh. test Daripada UTEM eh? Uh, UTEM Menarik hmm. tu uh, Mungkin boleh gunakan model dia lah untuk untuk awak kalau awak minat hmm. Nak, saya nak <laughs> <laughs> Saya cuma, berminat <laughs> Cuma bidang tu, kita tengok hmm. awak kena hmm. atas saya resume tu Okay hmm. uh. Okay, okay Jadi kita hantar Okay. Mungkin, mungkin Anis kena highlight dekat ni tau Anis Dekat apa tools hmm. atau facility yang biasa guna Kan ha. ST pun dia ada FSM Benda-benda hmm. yang mungkin related Lebih kepada apa-apa hmm. tool yang kita tahu guna Alright ha. Kalau projek tu mungkin agak Projek kita romang buat ni apa nama untuk hem device Aluminium nitride punya material Application apa tu? Apa dia? Application untuk apa? Aluminium nitride uh, Ni, HEM 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 ah, HEM dan juga LED LED so, HEM show, show phone untuk apa? High, high Electron Mobility Transistor HE Oh hmm. Okay, okay. Oh, Itu yang kuat Okay lah, dia untuk EV car pun pakai kan Yang high HEM device ni tu Tapi kita tak sempat buat sampai device pun Memang sampai level material Kemudian ada some electrical property macam tu lah oh. Okay, okay Kita panggil crowd lagi Tapi to, uh, to the expectation dia punya audien memang post graduate ke Ada undergrad, undergrad sekali? Dua-dua ada Dua-dua ada? Hmm. Okay tapi kita nak lebih nak nak cuba expose dia orang telah buat in, dalam semicon punya industri ni kan dalam FA hmm. ni kan so what what are the expectation lah bila kalau dia orang bidang ni apa yang akan ada lah hmm. which is undergrad pun uh, final year lah level final year punya kat atas lah hmm. uh, so which is yang memang dah nak pergi ke industri lah kalau boleh bila silibus sekarang memang ada ni uh, untuk apa Packaging and testing Ke Wafer fab Proses Proses ada hmm. Ada subjek micro E tu kan Tapi hmm. ha, Dia tak ada lah uh, Tak ingat lah Detail subjek tu Tapi hmm. subjek Dalam subjek micro E Memang ada proses Ada FA Testing Semua tu ada hmm. Jadi bukan lah Subjek Bukan Subsection kan Ya oh, yeah. yeah, Elective ha. lah ha. Subtopic je ha, Subtopic dalam elective kan 
Dan hari ni pun saya sebenarnya Saya invite student saya Student MEMS Oh Ramai lah student doktor eh Student saya student final year juga Apa nama 16 orang je Doktor kita tunggu 5 minit lagi lah eh. Baru start. Sekarang pukul 10. Okey okey tunggu.
Cina start sekarang tak? Ke nak tunggu? Ke boleh start kot eh? Okay. Alright lah, saya start eh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum and good morning everyone. So welcome for today webinar in the name of Allah, the most beneficent and the most merciful. We shall begin our session today with the recital of Umul Kitab Al-Fatihah. So I am Ani Suhaili. I am moderator for today's presentation. On behalf of the organizing committee, I would like to extend a very warm welcome to all of you. And we appreciate you taking time of your busy schedule to join us today. So we hope you will learn a lot from today's webinar. Some reminder for all the participants, uh, following the speaker presentation, we will have the Q&A session for you. Ask our speaker directly. However, you may submit the question in the chat box during the presentation and we will address them during the Q&A session. Thank you for your kind cooperation and attention. Dear participants, it is great pleasure and honor to welcome to the speaker, Mr. Farisa bin Abdullah. Allow me to introduce our speaker briefly. So, Mr. Farisa graduated from UTHM in Bachelor Degree of Electrical and Electrical Engineering and received his Master of Electrical Engineering in 2013 from UTHM. He started his career at PNE PCB Berhad as Assistant Engineer in 2000, 2003 and accepted an offer as Lead Engineer at ST Microelectronics Sendian Berhad from 2004 until 2010. Then he moved to Western Digital Malaysia Sendian Berhad until 2012 as an engineer. The following year, he became a staff engineer at Freescale Semiconductor Senyam Berhad. Mr. Farisal is currently a staff engineer at ST Microelectronics Senyam Berhad. Now, without further ado, I will hand over the session to Mr. Farisal. All right, Mr. Farisal, the floor is yours. Please welcome. Uh, thanks, Anis. Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. And very good morning to all the audience. First of all, I would like to uh, thanks to my fellow friend, also my ex uh, research supervisor, main supervisor is uh, Associate Professor Dr. Nafarizal Binayan, and also his team for this invitation. <coughs> so I hope everyone uh, stay safe because we are still in the pandemic. And then also our DG remind a few years back that there's potential that uh, the, the cases uh, can be spiked by the end of this November. So everyone must be follow the SOP very strictly. <clears throat> so for today, our sharing is about the challenge of the semiconductor failure analysis. But before we talking about the challenge, we have to understand in the bigger picture. Uh, on the left side, I already uh, line out some of the key points for today. First, what are the around the globe landscape? What the semiconductor? Secondly, what the who is the player? And next, about the evolution on electronic, uh, in particular in IC. And the fourth, about the fabrication and packaging. And the fifth, about the fair analysis. And the uh, Six for the career and research opportunity. And lastly, uh, if you should have a, any question, you can drop at the end of the session, or maybe you can write to to, to Ms. Anis or Dr. Nath Perizal, so I can come back to you later. <clears throat> okay, first of all, you have to understand very well the market demand. Now, uh, based on the statistical, the letters, you can see the highest population in the world is contributed by the China, Indian, US, and also industrial. This is why we have to understand the market because we are creating urgency for any uh, new product launch. Uh, time to market very critical. Uh, all the electronic uh, company will sell to penetrate to their market first to have a big, uh, big profit. So whoever penetrate the market first become the winners. 
So from here, I believe we cannot see any sign of our flag, Malaysian. But trust me, a uh, few few months before that, there's a major breakdown on the supply chains, especially on the automatic automotive market that uh, created by our uh, Malaysian because most of the electronic part is all manufactured in Malaysia. So during our uh, restriction, everyone have to, have to stay at home. So this uh, badly impact the chain. So the time to, time to deliver the, the end of product like car impact very well in China, Indian, US market. <clears throat> So this one about the mass market that how COVID-19 hurt a lot on the car market worldwide. So here you can see the decline of the, the numbers very badly hit the US, Europe, Asia, Russia, and China. This one only for automotive because we cannot uh, produce the part, uh, deliver the part during the uh, during the restriction. That's the reason all the manufacturers having a shortage of uh, materials. Uh, not only automotive, you go on the consumer market, on the smartphone, TVs, and notebook, all these things also decline. This will uh, really impact during the 2020. <clears throat> but nevertheless, and we see the projection, uh, beginning to the 2021, there's a huge uh, ascending. Then they're uh, forecasting the global electronic market can be projected to reach uh, 2.7 billion in 2024. <clears throat> While graphical, the market shares, uh, we can see the Asia pack also contribute a lot on top of uh, North American and also China. And we break down to the technology technology wise. <clears throat> you can see there's a few segment like a sensor technology application driver for, and this become automotive. And the key player, so ST a part of them to boost back what we have lost in the during the uh, pandemic 2019. <clears throat> So next, uh, let's have a look on the who is the major semiconductor industry player. For so from the inside research, there's a 15 or sometimes they were list uh, 10, the ranking from the one until the 15. You can see the Intel is a mainly uh, manufacturer, the IC processing for PC. But however, during the Q2, Samsung have uh, taken over. This has uh, never been be, never been happened before. So on the on the right side, you can see uh, compared to the 2020 versus 2001, uh, all the big player now gaining their strength because the market is uh, wake up. So this one is Q1, Q2, and you know, Q3. So what, what actually in the, from the IC segment is uh, the contribution is a combination of a lot of application, uh, like uh, industrial, automotive, or consumer, cell phone, uh, wireless network. And from data 2019 until 2021, we can see uh, an additional of the segment being add in. Okay. So I believe everyone uh, knowing well about the more loss that every, the gate will double up every two years. So we are welcoming on the nanotech since 2000. But now we are about uh, reaching the bottom. Uh, I would say is an impossible line because we are gaining from the nanometer scale now until 25 or 15, very, very super small. 
and also the in increasing of the scale of the transistor, the I.O. from CMOS 19 until CMOS 14. And also this uh, vast technology impacting also the, the way how we do the packaging from the 2D now to become a 3D. And this thing will be, because uh, a lot of functionality will add inside the IC, will be impact on the area, cost, and also time to market. Because whoever manufacturer able to deliver first uh, the product to the market will be the winner. Okay, first, <clears throat> next we have, have a look on the gate evolution. This one of the very old technology, we have a silicon substrate. We have a gate outside, silicon gate, and a gate outside as an insulator. Then we move to the high K for using metal gates for increase the speed of the switching. This one talking about the bulk silicon. Then we move to the SOI and also FDSOI, the full depleted or partially depleted uh, silicon on insulator. We have a gate and also double uh, biasing from the body gate to increase the speed without uh, risking any uh, current leakage from the gate to the source, like what we see, what we observe, what we experience on, from the block silicon technology. Then we move to the planar fat. This one mostly used in a microprocessor. First gate, uh, third gate, and also four gate. So this evolution of the technology become uh, interesting. From the 2D, become 3D. So this one just, uh, just uh, to illustrate you, uh, on the manufacturing, we are doing the very complicated. And from the FA sense of view, this one become more challenge, how to find the defect inside this, this thing, this, this complexity of the design. Okay, as a quick uh, introduction on the IC uh, manufacturing, first on the front, front end process, uh, from the silicon ingot become the wafer, doing the testing, middle end about the simulation, doing the packaging, and also the back end about the testing. <clears throat> okay, uh, talking about IC, uh, when they are manufacturing, it's not 100% perfect. So especially uh, this one, the Batu curve, that very familiar, very popular to explain the reliability of the IC, uh, defect density versus the time. So as an earlier fail, is a can be related to the design problem or like a design weakness. So the test screen able to scan out. This one we call it infant mortality, uh, like a gate outside rupture. And then this one <coughs> consider the intrinsic fail, the way the IC is using at the field. The field meaning that the IC being used in the final products. An example in your refrigerator, in your car, or in your handphone. And after I see uh, the IC reach at a certain period of time, uh, AKA uh, the guarantee like the autom automotive, we are guaranteed about 10 years. And we are moving to the phase way out. So anytime the IC is uh, beyond the warranty, then can can be fail. Okay. So this chart indicate uh, where the fail analysis is located inside the IC manufacturing. First of all, we have a design, we have a fab, or reliability, the stress test. Whatever fail, we will submit for this level, we have a fab, fail analysis. This one will investigate where's the failure possible, contribute, contribute during the process and feedback on the wafer fab for the improvement. And this loop will be continuous improvement. Then once they have a very good design and uh, robust IC, move to the packaging design where the IC 
put in the package form. <clears throat> so we go to assembly process and, we, and this one goes to package level fair analysis. And this level to understand uh, why the IC is not working well in package form. So this one also pick feedback to the process of the packaging manufacturing for any improvement program before the product release, before the IC using on the PCB board. <clears throat> okay, this one, just a quick, quick uh, flow on the, how the IC being fabricated from the silicon ingot, the crystal line, and then you will cut into the pieces. Uh, this one, the polished wafer can be 16, 8 inch, 10 inch, uh, depending on the application. Now this we have a silicon, we have a silicon carbide. And then move to the oscillation and doing masking to any uh, circuitry, uh, etching and, and so on. So at the end of the process, we will submit all the wafer for the electrical wafer sort. Uh, this one, we check the continuity and functionality of each die IC. For the standard manufacturing, uh, one lot, we have uh, about 25 wafer. And one wafer can be as small as uh, 100 up to 1,000 of a small IC. And this IC will be tested during the EWS sorting one by one. And for the failing uh, singulate IC, they will put the ink on top of it before send the IC to the packaging uh, back end uh, manufacturing plant. Okay, when when the manufacturing plant receive the IC, the wafer, uh, it's not hundred percent to say is a uh, good. So the failing one already have an ink dye. So from then we do the sawing to have a singulation and then do the attachment on the frame. This one uh, basic illustration on the IC in the package form. So you do the wire bonding to connect between the lead, external lead into the IC. Then we have the molding to cover up the exposed IC and also to prevent any moisture seep inside. And do the dumbbar cutting to have a singulation, uh, meaning that uh, one external uh, connection connect to the uh, correct uh, IO inside the die. And do the plating. Uh, this one is copper. They have a plating to prevent any corrosion or electro migration issue. And then forming, and then lastly for final test. And only we deliver to the, the PCBA uh, distributor for the next step to use the IC inside their module. This one for the uh, plastic package form. What we're talking about uh, flip chip is a different type of uh, process whereby the chip, uh, more or less a similar chip, but they have a solder bump, solder bow. And then this thing will attach together with a uh, designed uh, PCB, a small one with a, some uh, active IC component and do the underfill. Uh, to cut up and then to prevent any moisture. Okay, for the evolution on the fleet chip, also the what we call it COB a chip on board is depending on how uh, they design. I mean, where we are going to to use uh, the purpose. Uh, there's a for the different application like a mobile and also for the network satellite. So there were various form of uh, package on package, let's say uh, chip stack and chip. So this one become a challenge for FA a point of view when we are dealing with this type of uh, various packaging. packaging. <laughs> okay, we, just now I already illustrate and also briefing about the various type of packaging. So the meaning that we have, there's a highly 
essential that we under, fully understand well how the IC we manufacture and the way we make packaging because this all information that we have and we have to gather up uh, during the fair analysis because fair analysis something I would like to call as a reverse engineering it's some sort of like a forensic that we had try to find the defect and then find the failure root cause and our information is really critical because it will determine uh, the quality of the product and also our information will be feedback to the process team to improve uh, their cpk and i mean their, their process variation to have a very robust and can withstand a long period of time Okay, now the question how to do the fair analysis. So now we move to uh, this one, the packaging fair analysis mechanism. We have a two type, one for the maker over stress and then the way out. So this remind you the bathtub curve just now. So on the over stress, we have a two type, mechanical and electrical. Mechanical can be plastic invention, uh, delamination, where somehow the moisture seep inside the package. And depending on the moisture level, moisture level sensitive of each device. And so for electrical, this one is well known, uh, like EOIC ST, something that can be possible, high possible occur. I mean, happen during the PCBA or during the customer. So we have a go inside breakdown. Probably is an internal issue on the our welfare process. Uh, let's say interconnection melting. Uh, maybe there's uh, some bridging particle or foreign material that not able to detect during the zero time. I mean the uh, final test. Then on the way out mechanism, we have three mechanical. What the way off avoid uh, demolition, electrical, lock formation on the metal, junction spike, uh, electro migration can cost. Uh, leakage and also uh, adding up and up because uh, electrical over stress. Lastly, what chemical corrosion? If the IC been ex experienced uh, long hours in a high humidity condition, possible the moisture seep inside the package, come back through the preservation layer and then can cause the corrosion. So diffusion and uh, then dry growth. Okay, on the FA challenge to dig dive on the failure root cause. Uh, today, I would like to uh, highlight about three, three key items. First, about realistic analysis, uh, physical analysis, and material analysis. For more, more details, physical analysis is something that uh, we are screening uh, the IC at first stage. That's now I talk about EWS. If we saw it, and also some equipment that we are uh, usually use uh, to do the diagnostic on the IC, like a curve trace uh, ATE, do the bench or application test, do uh, microprobing, whether passive or active, and also electrical fault oscillation. Uh, this, this thing I will explain later. Next, on the physical analysis, about, uh, we do the Standard analysis on the IC and the sample uh, to understand and uh, to localize uh, the defect. It consists of encapsulation during the, the processing, either by chemical gases or physical. Uh, we do the circuit editing on the IC in the internal circuit. We do ACM for inspection, also the FIP and also TM. Next, for the meta analysis, we would like to understand in case we found the possible defect, we have to understand the source where the defect coming from the process. So that's become kind of critical that we have to find a way, the correct tool and correct knowledge to have to identify the element of the defect so that we need a few type, a few type of various type of machine that capable 
to understand, to identify the element in correct way. <coughs> okay, talking about the flow, first about the non-disruptive analysis, meaning that when the IC is failed, we don't do any disruptive. This one, we call it non-disruptive. Non-disruptive meaning that it won't impact uh, the IC in physical or electrical form. So about the optical inspection, we have to investigate very well uh, the external body, any sign of mark, burn mark or bulging, something that uh, in lead to lead. Then with the X-ray analysis, you can see the formation of the wire and so the check for the delamination on the scanning acoustic microscope. Next for the electrical analysis, uh, this is the equipment. Then we have a tree that uh, is very reliant on each other. It's a fault localization, fault isolation, and also the analysis. I mean that after we confirm the fail, the part is failure. Uh, let's say we have to decap, then we have to move to physical analysis first. Then only we do the microprobing, and then we go to the part localization. In case we have, we have to proceed to the next step, after we identify the possible location, we have to move back to the physical analysis for the sample variation on the dye processing. So at the end, uh, we end up the analysis by the optical and chemical analysis by using uh, certain equipment. So let's go one by one. So on the needs of synthesis, on this example uh, is related to the packet IC plastic uh, packaging, whereby we have a lip frame, uh, the dye, and then the mold compound is cover up the dye, and we have wired. Uh, this IC is using on the PC board. So on the non such analysis, external visual inspection, we have to identify if any potential of uh, defect that happen in between the leads, like a whiskey or maybe particle, foreign material, uh, can be a retro migration also. Uh, for this case, you see the bulging on the backs of the IC, uh, meaning uh, something abnormality. Then we move to the X-ray. We have a visual uh, idea on the on the die. I mean the connection on the wires. For instance, this is a gold wires. It's quite uh, clear from the X-ray. In some cases, we need a three D X-ray to see the the angle. Because uh, this one is, a, we call it a low count IC, can be uh, like a eight lit or up to maybe 48 lit. But we, we're talking about uh, high pin count, 64 until maybe few hundred lits. And we have a double bond. And then the true D X-ray is uh, not enough. We have to use a 3D X-ray to understand the angle because the wire length, wire pros proximity, wire wire to wire is very critical. Whereby you can create a shot. So FA need to use the uh, X-ray in wise way to exclude this sign of uh, possible failure that related to the wires. So then we have to submit for the uh, scanning acoustic microscopy. Like this one, we have a transducer with a certain extent of uh, frequency. Uh, for the high frequency, let's say 110 uh, megahertz for the CSAM. I mean, when the when the transducer, the pulser generated a waveform, uh, uh, travel to the water, the air water, and then penetrate on top of the IC and then move to the, the die. Then the signal reflect back to the transistor to collect the data. So for the good good IC, we can, we can see the die here, the whiteness. So on the bad IC, uh, the signal uh, not reflected is an absorb. And indicate that there's a de high delamination between the die and also the package. 
Uh, this one is very dangerous. When we mount this IC on the PCB, this can possibly create a popcorn effect. You know the popcorn, they on top of uh, do the ac acoustic on the top of the die. Another transistor, the low frequency, like 25 megahertz, used for the TSAM, meaning that the, the signal generated penetrate the IC, uh, penetrate, penetrate the package, and then goes to die, then move to the glue, and move to the bottom of the frame, and there's a detector down there. This is what we call a uh, true scan. So this one example a two uh, good IC. We cannot see any any gap. Delimitation meaning a gap between this material because we're talking about few material inside the IC. We have to ensure that there's a uh, no possible any gap happen inside or void. This one will create. Uh, big problem when the IC used in the PCB form. Okay, we move to the curve trace. Okay, this one, the very popular curve trace that from the Tektronik that normally we use to characterize the passive uh, component like a diode, transistor. But for the IC form, uh, we're talking about IO and we're only considering considering to check the IC uh, only for the collector and emitter. Only. So looking for any short circuit, open circuit, or maybe leakage. For the passive component, uh, this one we use uh, also for the to generate for the VGS. I mean the characteristic on the transistor. Uh, this one is a not covered by the IC because IC is a uh, combination of this, this all passive component that already built up, built in inside the IC. So this one, uh, the first uh, checking by the failure analysis to check whether there's a, some early, early symptom on the electrical failure, uh, pin by pin. Okay. When the, there is no uh, any gross failure uh, seen on the IC, gross failure means there's no short open or leakage. So we have to subjected the IC to the ATE. ATE stands to the standard uh, automatic test equipment. It's a big tester and a high expensive in, ter in terms of ROI. Because one, one big tester can cost you one to three million uh, USD, depending on uh, the functionality. Inside the big big tester, there's a lot of uh, combination equipment like a voltage meter, current sensor, uh, pattern generator, pattern analyzer, analyzer, all these things working in hardware. Uh, so the hardware engineer, and then the software engineer have to write the coding, I mean the test program, you to utilize all this all this combination of human uh, to provide a uh, comprehensive test on the IC. Comprehensive test, test meaning that first about the open shot failure and then for the Kelvin in case the IC need to experience any chamber test because for automotive uh, market the demand is to have a three time on the IC testing like a ambient 25 degree uh, cool minus 45 and still hot uh, 90 to 140 degree because automotive is uh, we are selling the product around the world from the North Atlantic uh, also so we can have a, in mind that uh, not only the hot company hot temperature country using the car also there's a coolest country using the cars so the automotive is very tight so we have to follow the iso then after this uh, continue check so 
We have also junction by test on pin by pin. And we move to a parametric. This one to, to check all the parameter inside the IC because the IC can be combination like a CMOS, uh, bipolar, and also power DMOS. So as to ensure all the parametric parameter inside them, like your M, uh, symmetrical, uh, logic generator, all, all working uh, according to the spec. Then we move to the digital one, like ATPG, a scan test for the scan IDDQ, scan trans, and so for the EPROM, uh, in case the IC having a memory inside to, to check the big cell, read, write, all, all this stuff. Okay, once we confirm uh, the failure by the ATE, the FA analysis is uh, recommended to replicate, to try to replicate the failure on the bench level. Bench level mean we're doing in the in our lab, in a certain equipment, limited equipment, let's say by PC, you know, so with the application board, uh, with the possible any load. Uh, since we are working on the automotive product, let's say this one we have a BLC, brushless, three phase load, ABC. So, first we have initiate, uh, the, I mean, the, the graphic user interface to try to turn on the, the motor and see the characteristic. So, we try to understand just now the failure that we observe from the ATE, the parameter we try to replicate on the bench because. Uh, this become the setup uh, for the, our next step. Okay, our next step, uh, maybe we recap the parts, part first. We expose the die and then uh, let's say we need to have a micro probing on the die. And this one example of the room inside the, on the die. Actually, this die is uh, bigger than this. And the ATE uh, managed to identify there's a failure in the bit cells. So there, there's a uh, recommend, I mean, there's a mandatory to the analyst to have a microprobing to reach uh, the big cell individual. So imagine this big room, uh, we have about one centimeter per square, about few hundred uh, transistor. A few thousand transistor in one centimeter square. So how, how to do the microprobing? Before that, we have to understand that microprobing they have a two: one of the active probe, and one of the passive probe. Passive probe are normally used just to measure two point. I mean, the characteristic of the IV. While the active probe uh, measuring directly the signal inside, uh, maybe. We need a spectrum or, I mean, the logic signal. Then we need IT probe. Because IT probe will encrop, encrop, uh, we're working together with the, with all this equipment. Because when we're probing, there's a high potential, uh, the noise. And also the signal alternation, also signal loss. We have to use the signal amplifier. amplifier. So from the, this one, you see the cross, a lot of cross on top of and this one. This one actually on the ACM image. Okay, first we identify the, the interested, I mean the point, point of interest on the cells using the LVS, I mean the CAT. The CAT will identify this uh, singulate uh, most, I mean, the module that we need to have a probing to understand the behavior internally. This one not able to assess from the external lip because we are talking about to isolate the area. Then we do the FIP cut, the focus ion beam to do the milling uh, deep down on the possible uh, metal at which level because on top we have a top metal. So so intention for the probing, we have to have access the down metal without affecting the overall functionality. So cutting, I mean, exposing the insulator layer without 
without disrupting any uh, line of metal. Then we de deposit uh, the example with this case of platinum during the FIP and then deposit it uh, this way. Uh, this one, the size about the uh, 600 nanometer in the X form. Well, why we need the X form? Because this one will help analysts to, to land. I mean, when you're using the edit probe, they can land here, here, and here. Because if you're doing the probe like a square, then it's quite hard to land the probe the prop tip and this one the prop tip on oh, this one the uh, how we see in the optical this one the ACM image okay that's now about the passive prop this one we are looking for any normal short uh, open leakage high resistance of course we have to compare each time with the uh, reference units so every time FA doing the FA we have the comparable result so we have to done in parallel to sample one, the failing sample, another one is the reference sample. And for, for instance, when we doing the singulation prop on the dedicated, uh, the, the flip flop, let's say, in sample, we do the, using the parametric analyzer, in like a curve trace, but this one, we can control uh, the bias, I mean, Let's say we put um, 10 millivolt and we measure the current. So for the good and fail, we can we have a comparison and we do the hypothesis and the possible what actually happened on that uh, particular failing point. So then for the active, there's now a lot of, uh, go back to here, we have a lot of uh, probe. So each probe, we have to land the probe tip and measure, measure the sample uh, to do the comparison at what, at what uh, particular time that uh, the failure occur. This one need to be sync, sync up with the, uh, the logic to the SPI, the serial peripheral interface. And also we have a sync with the correct timing uh, to select also the input. For this case, See the abnormal on the bad part, they toggle up and then not according to a good I'm going low. So this one uh, not not end yet because this one actually is a analysis to isolate. I mean to based on this only information, the analyst will decide what what to do next. Okay. Just now the isolation on the microprobe, we use the localization. We have a four key point. There's a more, but today I only explain three. So we have a for thermal failure, we can use a thermal emission or liquid crystal. Uh, secondly, on the emission microscope, we have a static and dynamic, and we have a laser scan microscope. Talking about static and dynamic also. This one the the example of the technique. And fourth one is about the let's go microscope using the and also focus ion beam. This one uh, quite interesting, but this topic won't cover for today, but uh, just to have a brief depth, this one actually uh, based on contrast. Uh, when talking about let's go microscope, we are using the E-beam like your ACM. So when the electron bomb up, on the sample, let's say we bombard on the metallization. So if the metallization is uh, having a brighter, brighter, uh, we understand uh, is a sign of a floating. Compared to the metallization, we have a grounding, become become a darker. This one using ACM. Another one method is using a focus ion beam. This one using the ion. Uh, in this case, using the gallium as an ion source, uh, the result is vice versa, like the electron microscope in, in general. So we have a passive and also active. 
meaning that passive is just two point uh, analysis and while active you have to vice up the, the the IC inside the chamber with a certain electrical condition and we do the uh, assessment on the contrast because uh, this technique is very useful for the mem uh, memory type of failure because in memory there's a lot of uh, bit cell right in so how to singulate the, the failure the faulty bit so this one uh, very useful okay uh, for today covering topic we i only explain the three this one okay for thermal okay thermal we're talking about liquid crystal uh, is a liquid form uh, in hermetic uh, form then this one we use a polarizer lens to align the, uh, the crystal and we do the biasing. But this one, a uh, very tricky uh, method because uh, we can only, only see the, the spot in a, week, uh, in a very short form of period. Sometimes it will be confusing with the others black, but actually this black is not represent the failure, the point of failure. So compared to the thermal analysis, uh, this one thermal analysis is we don't need uh, to expose the dye. This one in the package form. So I just uh, overlay the image between the package and also the X-ray. So the the hotspot uh, indicate that uh, the heat generated from the eye from the dye. This one, we can make a earlier assumption that uh, the failure is uh, from the dye. Uh, some other cases, in case there's a wire shot failure, uh, the thermal will generate on the wires. Also, maybe there's a FM issue. I mean, the foreign material reside in between the lid. We generate right here. So this thermal imaging is uh, quite useful. Uh, for analysis to have a earlier judgment where actually the failure at which, at which area the failure generated and this one less uh, less what, what you call it hazard because compared to the crystal this one the energy need to handle uh, by hand on the liquid so there's uh, some safety concern but as long as you are F analysis, everything is risky. Uh, we have a very tight uh, procedure. Okay, for the photo emission detector, I mean the photo emission, uh, just now, electrical microscope, no, we're talking about photo emission. So before explaining about the technique, you have to understand what, what type of detector we are using. So first, what the CCD, the charge couple device, this one, name of the detector. Then we have a maquette. It's a combination of the mercury, cadmium, tellurium, and also the ingas. So why we have a various type of uh, detector? Because based on the quantum heat emission uh, versus the wavelength. So we have a uh, understand the sensitivity level of the, uh, on the part, because we are doing the silicon based uh, IC. So where the silicon transmission is begin at uh, proximity 1.1 nanometer. And then this one very high sensitivity if you are using the market camera and also the back. For the highest, I mean the high uh, failure success rate uh, to found the defect. So in this case, uh, it's highly recommend to using the ingas because they can work both at the front side and also the backside. Uh, what is front side about the backside? Uh, I will explain later. Okay. So this one, the uh, photo emission, uh, the popular one from Hama Masu and so FEI, but now knowing as a Tomo Fisher. Okay, this one, the logic logic circuit is all metal, metallization. Then you see the spot emitted from the from the bottom underneath of the metallization indicate that 
uh, this is uh, extra spot but we have to uh, take care i mean we have to be wise on the judgment on the emission because not every emission represent the failure because sometimes the emission actually represent the an inactive unintentional unintention active uh, from the from the blocks we have to uh, just as i said now in parallel we have to do the benchmark between the uh, i mean the failing unit and also the reference unit because sometimes on the reference unit there's a spot but the failure unit no spot meaning that is a we call it a lack of spot but for the ideal case we are always you uh, looking for the extra spot extra spot that meaning that the the spot not not emitted on the reference unit uh, for this this case is a genuine spot generated from the logic block and like, like this spot is not a defect spot you see this one the uh, wire bond landing on the i mean this one the io and then this one actually is a uh, the protection diode it's a activate so this spot uh, not for the fairness judgment as a defect okay let's now we're talking about sensitivity level uh, we have to consider also the type of lens we are using so we can have a mi micro lens uh, with a high sensitivity micro lens mean that uh, about the depend on the size uh, 0.8 or maybe one point something then we move to ob objective lens can be 2x until 100 or 250x depending on the uh, allowed uh, working distance when we do the fa on the sample and then move to the most uh, advanced is uh, what we call it uh, solid emission lens. So this one is the standard lens for the, here we can see the propagation on the light is uh, through the, the air gap to penetrate on the, the sample on the silicon. So we have a minimum reflection on the sample and so on a laser spot uh, spot can be quite uh, not not accurate but when we're talking about uh, seal land solid image land nano lens so we are using a similar object lamp but there's a tip on top of the lens that tip actually is uh, made by the silicon silicon type so in this case uh, silicon contact with the sample silicon so we have a better angle for light collection. Then we have a very solid spot. And this one is well uh, used. I mean, in the failure analysis uh, related to digital, because we are talking about thousand uh, transistor in centimeter square area. So this one is very highly recommended on the failure analysis. Okay, we just now from the photo emission, we move to, to laser stimulation. We have two types. One is a 190 nanometer laser. Uh, normally we call it 1.1 micrometer. Secondly, is a 1340 or 1320 nanometer. Normally we use a 1.3 micrometer. Okay, first about the 1.1 micrometer laser, about a few hundred milliwatt power. Actually, for the photoelectric laser stimulation, because uh, this wavelength actually is uh, below on the silicon band gap. So when the laser lays on the sample, it will create a photocurrent generation. And this one very useful for the type of static uh, analysis, like orbit, optical beam induced current. Uh, this one more related to the crystalline uh, the silicon defect itself also can use for uh, dynamic uh, approach for the example ladder and then for the next 1.3 micrometer is usually for the thermal laser simulation meaning when the laser penetrate on the sample we generated the heat so based on the heat the thermal heating 
uh, because then we can isolate the point of failure because uh, this wavelength of laser is above the silicon band gap. For static, we are uh, using it as a orbit technique is an optical beam induced resistor change technique. Also like a TIVA, LIVA, thermal induced uh, voltage alteration for dynamic like a DLS, SDL, soft defect, uh, defect localization. Meaning that uh, type of defect that very hard to screen up uh, because it's uh, depending on the temperature, or frequency, or voltage alteration. Okay, just now about the wavelength, you can see the silicon 1.1. Uh, this is from the type of uh, detector just now. We have a gallium asinite. This one, the market. This one uh, published by Thomas Dishamner. I just shared. Um, the energy wavelength on the option for from the near infrared until the visible light. So uh, before the do FA, we have to understand well, very well, the what kind of detector, what kind of uh, sample we are dealing. We have, uh, as I said just now, we have to use the correct uh, tools uh, to in order to increase our success rate of finding a defect. Okay, now we move to laser simulation. Okay, there's uh, two approach from the front side, meaning that the laser will face, uh, when we decay the part, uh, the laser will face first the metal interconnection on the top. If on the first technique, uh, then the laser will scan through the, the line of defect. And like the orbit is now optical beam uh, induced resistance. So the resistance on this material we're changing after heat up by the laser. So on the front, front side, uh, compared to the back side. Back side meaning that in case we have a more than two or three uh, metal interconnection, let's say seven, six. So it's not possible to use a uh, back uh, front side approach because we have a metal dense uh, issue. They probably can uh, block uh, the signal where the where the uh, true defect uh, reside. So that's why we have to move to another technique, use a backside. So we scan uh, the part from the backside of the, the package. So that, uh, that we will reach the silicon substrate first. But of course, uh, this one I will explain later. Uh, we have to thin up this one first. So on the stat, uh, laser stimulation on the static, we have a few type, uh, orbit on the resistance. Uh, and in, in case there's a defect or bridging on the metallization or small burn, there's a changing on the resistance. So, so the color here, just, just a threshold can be black, uh, red or green, depending on the software to indicate uh, the possible of the where the defect has been generated. So second, the orbit is from the silicon uh, from the back side. So for the to generate a photo current, so there's a big spot to indicate there's something wrong with the, on the silicon. And third, we have uh, TIVA for thermal induced voltage acceleration. We have a few hotspots I need to be investigated. And so we have a lever for the light spot compared to the adjacent structure. And lastly, for the seabed effect. Uh, this one, uh, we bias, uh, I mean, the, the failure in zero volt. Uh, even we bias in zero volt, there's a still current electron flow. Or in this case, in negative. Uh, because, uh, for example, this structure already having a burn, so we don't need to bias any voltage. And we just do see back and see the resistance change uh, on the structure. Okay, we move to just now static. Move to dynamic. Okay, dynamic is uh, more complicated because just now we're talking about the frequency, voltage, temperature. 
Uh, this one we need to have a tester because this is not uh, not only involve two point of uh, biasing. Uh, this one involve uh, the big tester also they have a soft pair. So we have a uh, in order to have a correct uh, test course, test configuration. I mean the setup. Uh, the unit need to be test first, and we have to plot on the Shimu plot. This one voltage versus uh, the frequency. Because this one we call it a soft de defect localization because this part actually can be fail, can be fast, fast and fail. Uh, it's not like a previous uh, example. That one is very gross. I mean, once it's fail, it fail. But this one, as possible, can be escaped. But however, in this case, whatever return for customer, uh, consider fail. But there's a challenge for FA for this type of uh, soft defect, and also this defect actually can can pass um, and so can can escape on our final test so we have a setup and then we scan from the back because this one uh, because it is uh, failing uh, generated from the logic block so have a tester and then we looping the failure there's a, on the failure, we have a lot of uh, parameter. So we have to selection, do selection on the failing parameter when we do in the loop. So meaning that every time the tester test, uh, the failure is triggered. Then from then we have, to, from then only we can do the detector and then plotting the image to see the failure. Uh, to see the, uh, the significant spot. Okay. So after complete the fault isolation, localization, we move to physical analysis. Uh, like I say, just now, physical analysis also come first because in case we need to recap the part or from the top or the back side. So for the example of the IC package, okay, we uh, nowadays we use the etching type of uh, type of uh, front side recap. We have a few. Let's say we use a laser, laser ablation. Uh, class one, the, the laser very uh, disruptive. They will uh, destruct. I mean, remove the mole from the dye. But uh, this one, they have a risk. If you are exceeding certain height, uh, the laser also can possible to damage the dye. So this one, the unwanted uh, scenario. This why we have to fine tune the correct recipe. So uh, this laser actually just to assist the, during the capsulation, but then we have to continue with the uh, chemical edge. Uh, so some of the technology now also we are using plasma because plasma is using gases and after we do the laser, continue with the plasma edge and we have the exposed dye from the top. Like this one, it's very perfect edge uh, exposing the dye and also not, not damaging, damaging the, the, the wires. Okay, talking about the backside just now. Backside is uh, assessing the die from the backside. But there's uh, some block, uh, blocking point is uh, the slug. The slug is a uh, copper mate and can be thicker. So we have to use the mechanical uh, to remove the slug and then we use a polishing head with a certain uh, chemical uh, like abras abrasive chemical so under this selective area we do the thinning and then, then polishing polishing meaning uh, we have to polish the dye let's say the dye thickness about 300 at least we have to thin down until 100 or 150 micrometer thin down because uh, the thicker dye is actually the thicker the silicon bulk. So we have to thin, thin down the bulk until we can, until we reach the uh, semi mirror finish. I mean mirror, we have, when you see the, the mirror and then it will reflect back your eyes. Okay, what we call it semi mirror finish. And from the semi mirror finish, uh, we can, can use the uh, eye camera to do the imaging. So this example, 
the part open from the back side but in this case is partially uh, because it's depending on what type of uh, FLA you want so from the back we can this one you can see the exposed uh, exposed die but this image is a uh, overlay from the x-ray also on the sample just to understand uh, the different I mean where the the mole already I mean the slug already been open okay so next for the dye processing actually these three is uh, working together uh, chemical uh, I mean the chemical gases and physical this this type of uh, technique will be uh, done in the isotropic for, for plasma on isotropic or the chemical edge okay let's say we are just we start to do the by the processing we're using the plasma uh, certain gases with a certain power rf uh, this one actually for the removing the the glasses because on the ic itself i mean the top metal there's a one glass we call it passivation layer then after the passivation then only the mold i mean the complete mold so after we recap we remove the mold then there's a glass the glass uh, is very transparent and very thick so it's not possible to use the chemical approach so we use the uh, plasma rie to remove the glass with certain extent of high power uh, gases and also uh, timing so after remove the glasses then we reach to metal seven and metal seven since this metal is uh, quite thicker we can use the chemical approach to remove the metal so this uh, technology is co considered a planar technology whereby all the layer been aligned i mean in the in the correct i mean the flat planar 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 planar, planar form so after use the chemical we can use the uh, i mean the chemical we can use the uh, physical physical is what we call a lapping using a mechanical lapping uh, we stick the dye on the stage we use a la lapping uh, plate with the this one the workplace this one the, the plate workplace workpiece meaning the dye then we apply the colloidal silica maybe 0 0.05 micrometer or 0 0.025 micrometer it's a suspension and this abrasive uh, silica we do the physical lab i mean removing uh, up until the until to the point of failure that we need so this thing uh, work in the combination <coughs> okay in case uh, we no need for the lapping let's say after the cap we see the defect so we can consider use the for the defect identification using the optical or ACM. So maybe from the top we already see the burn metal on the physical burn, the melted uh, melted metal, also the carbonized mold together with metal. That's why it can darker. And this one normally causing a shot. Maybe oh, for the open failure also can cause by the EOS when we have a melted and open connection and also possible of uh, melted boarding wires so the few this wire is fused by the EOS but uh, no more evidence because the evidence is etched away uh, during our decapsulation by the chemicals or maybe for this the processing just now we have to further down until the uh, this one poly and get website level to see the sign of EST uh, on the contact uh, burn on contact this one talking EST or maybe we have uh, some sort like poly defect you see the poly easily landing here uh, uh, bridging between two uh, this one most and this one uh, another another most 
final this final ground line so maybe uh, for the last one we remove, have to remove the poly uh, this one type of example of gate offset defect it's a hole there possible that particle drop uh, during the outside uh, definition before the poly okay okay on top of the just now uh, the processing uh, this one I share one example of the study case using of the FIP yeah, so <coughs> FIP meaning uh, focus ion beam using the ion uh, gallium source this one consider destructive so first uh, we identify uh, the possible failing block from the cat this one the cat the layout and so schematic and this one driven by the failing uh, electrical uh, to allocate where's the possible failing most and we subjected for the fault localization by the in this case using orbish so we can have a few type a few orbish spot but this spot actually just now what i see is a normal spot sign of activation on the the most I mean, uh, the protection diode. But we are really insisting that uh, the the genuine almost from the five twenty until hundred x objective length to ensure that the all spot is consistent. Uh, look at the same area at each. Uh, each objective lamp uh, magnification because this indicate uh, the spot is genuine because sometimes uh, okay uh, in other case the spot in the lower objective lamp but on the higher object lamp where the lens is uh, near nearer to the silicon there's no spot this is another story and we have to take uh, possibility that the defect is not reside on the silicon but reside on the in front i mean in on the metallization uh, level for this case uh, we are processing from the back side okay so after we allocate the spot we do the eye imaging uh, using the laser penetrate uh, the dye and then reflect back we do the imaging and found that there's uh, some abnormal on the between the uh, the poly line so then we do the overlay overlay with the cat back in order to have a correct xy uh, coordinate to the fib so the fib cut we have to do the cross section from from here as a pre-opening and then do the slicing down uh, polishing up to uh, point of interest in this case uh, you can see there's some uh, abnormal on the poly compared to the good shape on the gate and this one contribute uh, the lead and the, the leakage what we saw in the obvious spot okay for second on the tm Okay, now just now talking about the active probing. So a lot of probing here and there been be done to allocate where's the possible faulty uh, failure by the cat. And then we do the cross section by the FIP. But after we are about to near to the point of interest, we have to do the lamella preparation, meaning that in the lamella, actually the sample set submitted for the TEM, the transmission emission microscope where the electron uh, penetrate and transmit through the thin silicon uh, this size is uh, very very small size in a, a few uh, nanometer so the lamella will do the processing by flip in two direction this direction and stop in this direction stop and then we'll uh, dig down by the tip and then pull up the sample 
during during the thinning until the very very thin and then goes to transmission to see the uh, the overview on the NAND gate in case there's a abnormal. So this one uh, about a 500 uh, nanometer scale in the black contrast on the TEM result. But for this case, uh, not able to identify the defect. Even the NAND gate is failing. Because uh, talking about FA is not every time we have a high success rate to have a physical defect. Sometimes the defect is there, but not not being explained by the physical. It can be uh, can be due to something like uh, voltage shift or whatever uh, reason that SPA is uh, mysteriously not able to explain. Okay, uh, before we're talking about the uh, material just now, we're talking about uh, electrical, physical, and last one is material. Material is somehow to identify. After we found the defect, we have to identify the element of the defect. So one of the famous method using for the, uh, to identify the material is uh, using the EDS, EDX. So the, we have a selection on the minimum voltage on the ACM. Uh, the higher is better, but it's depending where the defect is high. But in case uh, the failure is lay on top of the die, we have to consider to use the Auger uh, method. The so Auger method, that only penetrate a few unstrong, unstrong and on the top of on the defect to collect the element. So this uh, a certain voltage will bombard the electron, penetrate to the second shell, and then uh, the X-ray will be collected by the detector, and then we can cross with a periodic table for the uh, element indication. So for, for IC is let's say it's a silicon, carbon, let's say. We have a, let's say nickel, copper, palladium for the interconnection. This one, the, the well-known element that we are, should have in mind when we do the EDS. <coughs> okay, study case on the EDS. Okay, we have one uh, cases that short during the backside. So see, here is a photo emission versus high orbit. Photo emission managed to have a, uh, signal on the emission but from this how I say from the each objective lens until the 100 X uh, the emission become weaker so meaning that uh, this one compared to the orbit so whether the spot is uh, still stronger on each objective lens so this, this sign of defect is uh, not actually generated from the uh, from the silicon level because when we do the eye imaging, we cannot see any burn or, or abnormal on the structure of the die. So we have to go to the front side decap. From front side decap, we move, uh, remove the mold from the top and also some layer uh, polymer insulator and also after that, we expose uh, the die or the top metal. You can see there's uh, some uh, burn mark. But it's kind of strange to have a burn mark at this area because it's unlikely due to EOS because it's not uh, involving any supply pin or ESD protection diode. So this carbonized is subjected for the EDS. When, when we bombard the electron and then we do the mapping Mapping means collecting all the strong signal and the plotting on the plotted back on the software. So this metal line is uh, an IPD. So we can see any uh, small traces on the IPD in between that, that already carbonized, uh, polymerized, become black. So this one indicate uh, the high 
possible presence of uh, either uh, foreign material or maybe issue on the electro migration because when the operating lifetime this signal carry uh, uh, certain extent of electron so time by time if the insulator is not uh, good enough there's a sign of there's a potential of uh, electro migration regrowth uh, inside the insulator layer and then eventually we have a shot uh, between two adjacent metal line <coughs> okay on top of uh, EDS uh, one second okay just now it is for the metallic uh, for the also for the unorganic but for the organic material is possible to use the EDS uh, approach now this one actually this uh, approach is for very useful for the process to improve their yeah what <coughs> their quality because uh, we cannot exclude any potential of uh, contamination on the environment or maybe on the machine and then when the FTIL uh, play the roles always we have to comparing with a good sample for this case we have to signal I mean for the comparison uh, the same area is for the normal one blue being normal signal but the red one is spiking then we cross probe with the the library inside the FTIR and this one we managed to have a confirm the contamination due to the poly ethylene terafide okay the the concept is producing the ISR slot to the sample and then whatever transmitter we are detecting and plotting the the signal okay talking about the ic uh, packaging from the wafer side until the packaging side there's a lot of uh, supply chain on this this area from the r&d management process marketing for analysis application assembly testing and more so this one uh, working as together because even one supply chain will break and we will cause the impact and what happened in the past month on the car maker that they're having a shortage of the IC even I uh, news on the BM new model that they they feel not not in Malaysia model they fail to to deliver the product with the touch screen because they have a shortage IC. Okay, I think uh, that's it for now. I mean, for today, uh, the short briefing about uh, this IC in the bigger picture and also for the for the what uh, intensive uh, working. So I I hope you enjoy and also understand roughly on the idea what the fair analysis on semiconductor is uh, doing about. All right. Okay, uh, thank back you. to Anis. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you, Mr. Farista, for the very informative and the interesting talk. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, now we come to the Q&A session. So, any question from the participants, you may ask directly to Mr. Farista or you may type. I will read for you. So, we have one question from the participant in the chat box. So, thank you, Mr. Farisa. Can you share about skill that need by student to become a pilot analysis engineer? Any good software or know-how they should study to improve their CV or job interview? Yeah, about the tips. We can, uh, we can hear you. Uh, just now about the tips about what doing okay, the FA? to become FA engineer yeah oh. any software we need to learn or any hmm. yeah any tips or oh, any tips okay uh, FA engineer is uh, for me is quite a complicated job because 
is uh, in, consists of uh, knowledge background on electronic uh, physics and so chemistry because uh, we are talking a various uh, process and even you are not master it but uh, even you have a very soft knowledge on it should be should be okay because uh, in the learning state uh, on the on the real problem solving that you can learn more so any software we need to master before we enter the fa or okay for the software uh, i'm not sure but 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 for the programming level i mean this one for quite uh, benefit on the testing level and also application maybe you can consider uh, the basic language of the programming to understand because uh, there's uh, some uh, blocking point that FA need to interpret uh, the data from the test ATE. And that the ATE is uh, the one generate, I mean, designed by the software engineer, but they are, they are de developing the, the test program only for test. But for FA side, we have to extract and then select, do the selective on the portion of the test. To, for our own uh, study. So for basic uh, language uh, programming is uh, highly recommended, but not not is not not too not too critical. Oh, okay. okay. Thank you. Another question is: uh, Can you explain more about the popcorn effect? Okay, popcorn effect is a. Uh, Explosive uh, IC because uh, each IC there's a standard uh, moist MSL moisture sensitivity level uh, one two three meaning that uh, when uh, depending on the application also the type of packaging so when uh, manufacturer send the IC to the distributor distributor meaning the PCBA uh, level uh, the other company they have to use uh, that IC in certain period of time according to the msl let's say have to uh, using between two weeks uh, uh, otherwise you have to backing for 48 hours so meaning that uh, the ic uh, the the mall i mean the material is having uh, highly sensitivity to have a moisture seep inside the package so we're talking about a plastic package so if the moisture is seep inside the case is uh, big enough so when the manufacturer use the IC on the PCB go to IRA flow about 270 degree then the air trap inside the IC will expand and we can hear the popcorn oh. inside the line okay uh, this that's is why it makes uh, popcorn <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because yeah. the sound okay yeah it's not so, popcorn <laughs> okay <laughs> So another question from the Vincent yeah. Good day, Mr. Farisa. I would like to ask, is it possible that some failures cannot be detected throughout the whole failure analysis process? Uh, yes. It's not 100% that uh, FLA will find a defect. Uh, some of cases, we will end it with no trouble found or physical defect not found. Because uh, the failure is there, but it's not uh, explainable in, in physically. Uh, meaning that uh, maybe in case they are involving any uh, like example uh, for the uh, device that have a few various of dopant concentration and that dopant concentration is not visible if in case there's a low low dopant on uh, on top of should be higher so that one is not possible to be explained in the in the what in the physical can only explain by the maybe measurement or uh, something else okay okay another question is from dr rias ahmad so the first question uh, as the chip architecture getting smaller toward the nano or pico scale it might introduce more failure possibility due to metal impurities so how how we can balance the cost Higher purity usage versus uh, lower lower failure. 
value yeah okay this one quite tough question <laughs> because uh, actually we don't know because uh, the, the the intention to have a few type of material uh, because we are moving to nano scale actually for the better uh, controllability uh, high high fast uh, switching uh, low cost uh, also greener i mean is a ehs uh, compliant so uh, this one i would say is a is under uh, give and take uh, and also reliability issue it's not uh, clear cut that uh, we can say that when you use a better material i mean better material can can uh, somehow uh, impact the cost and some manufacturing because we are producing in a mass scale so we are not able to absorb that cost because example in the past uh, we are using uh, aluminium or gold wires that wire is uh, buying we bought in the uh, ounce but we are moving forward we're already doing the research and now, now most of the packaging is using a copper wire because copper wire is uh, quite cheap and uh, better adhesion because on the bone pad we don't have any cratering issue because it's not involving uh, in the past like cratering meaning that on the wires uh, gold mount on the aluminium cratering so and now i see packaging have a bone pad with a copper and also the wire also copper so we have the have the flexibility copper and copper so it's maybe not 100% cost uh, answering the question but uh, this, this the idea uh, the pressure is there but uh, it's depending in which uh, uh, which area of the the what the technology because uh, this ic is uh, two two various the application okay second question yeah, the second question is how uh, use of failure IC is recycled? How use? I, I don't understand the question. <laughs> can, hmm. can... Maybe Dr. Yas can ask uh, Mr. Yeah, Farisa. Uh, Mr. Faisal? Oh, okay. Hi, Dr. Yas. Apa khabar? Sehat? Baik, Alhamdulillah. Hmm. Okay. Um, okay. Actually, my second question was uh, regarding how the IC or the used IC is recycled. Uh, is it oh, okay? Okay, how are you going to because yeah. uh, we are towards green as you yeah, mentioned yeah. earlier, yeah. and uh, I think I believe oh. more than oh. maybe 100 trillion chips is oh. already came out in the market. Yeah. And this kind of a chip, if it is old, how are you going oh. to how you how actually it is being recycled? Okay, uh, talking uh, inside the IC, let's say microprocessor. I think the most uh, precious thing inside that is a is a gold because inside that is a gold wire uh, gold plated uh, material i mean metallization so for the use ic is a uh, so back to basic when we manufacture the ic all the all the what uh, material being used is uh, compliant with the standard uh, ehs i mean the world standard ISO and when we dealing with use IC we have subject that to the uh, credential contractor to do the disposition disposal so uh, so the material is uh, not not what you call is a band uh, substance so for, for, so it can be recycled like say for the copper uh, meaning that the leads can be recycled back and so the the wires and also the metallization inside but for the mold side uh, i'm i'm not sh sure how, how they are recycling because the, that mold is coming uh, from the uh, pallet when we do the molding and then one this thing we melted and hardened uh, i'm not sure whether they can be recycled back or not but uh, i saw some uh, but uh, research that this small uh, we grind and then can use as a pre on the road. Okay. 
Alright, thank you. Okay, welcome. Alright, maybe Dr. Nafa has a question. Yeah, uh, my question. Thank you, Farisal. Uh, my question is on the industry. I think uh, ST is a back-end industry, right? Uh, back-end and testing. Back-end and testing. Oh, so yeah. if we compare with the other in back-end industry in Malaysia, I think last time you, you were also in some company in uh, Infineon, I'm not saying it was in... Uh, Scale. Yes, Scale, okay. Uh. You're still also on the back-end, right? Uh, yeah, back-end and testing. The interesting. Okay, if, mm. what are the other uh, back end and testing industry that we have here in Malaysia, and how how do you see the scale? I think ST mm. have a lot of facility. You have a lot like mm. FIB, have a mm. SAM. So in terms of facility wise, mm. which which company do you think is is uh, among the the top in Malaysia or mm. at, based on your experience? So okay. maybe you can comment on that. So quite quite tricky question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, for the wafer, there's a two uh, wafer fab uh, front end, we call it, and then front end that one, including the EWS for the testing, and for the back end is a manufacturing and test. So, manufacturing and test, we have a let's say one semicon, uh, Infineon, uh, ST, uh, Xperia, uh, Texas Instrument. But uh, for ST, only band and testing is located in Malaysia. But for the rest, like uh, Infineon, I mean Xperia, there's a, a front end in the, I think it's not mistaken, it's Nawang. But for the, for the ST, our front end is located nearest in Singapore. So the contribution, uh, I mean, uh, in terms of uh, facilities wise, is uh, of course uh, plan we have who have a front end they have a, a more complicated more complex more advanced uh, in terms of uh, equipment uh, that's why uh, whoever lab that reside I mean in the same region with the FFFAP having advantage to have a more complexity of the analysis so for FA lab, more is bonding with the manufacturing test. So for my case, I'm the product FA on the die level, not, not in package level. And that's the reason I have to travel some month to, to my division uh, in Italy for the for the what? For the training, for the on-job training. And then this one from the view of uh, my experience. Because on the on the what uh, packaging and test side, uh, the the what the lab is uh, more related to packaging uh, R and D. Uh, like for instance, let's say for the delamination, we are investing on the uh, scanning acoustic microscopy. So that one is very critical because we not only doing the IC package with a chip on board or some or for others. <coughs> okay. Okay, okay, thank you. So any more question from the participant? Mm, uh, I want to ask um got any software to design semiconductor for the fabrication? Any software to design semiconductor like MOSFET or CMOS? Do you have any recommended software design the uh, layout? Okay. The model, uh, <laughs> the model in 3D shape, uh, like CAT. Uh. Okay, uh, for the design point of view, uh, this one uh, owned by the designer team. So for information, FA only have uh, access on the viewing only, not for editing. So oh. what what kind of software we are we are using uh, like a Caden Vitoso, uh, like a Camelot, uh, some sort like that. 
Oh. So we have a limited uh, restriction on the license because FA not 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 is a del developing. We are we are only using for the the LVS. I mean the layout versus schematic for our for localization or isolation purpose. Mm, okay, thanks, thanks. But to answer you, is a Caden. I mean, Caden is widely used, right? Caden. Yes, yes. In fact, we have, we have that license uh, in uh, UTHM as well, oh. but I'm I'm thinking oh. it's quite an old versions. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Maybe the library is uh not so. Yeah, not maybe. updated. <laughs> Micrometer. Yeah, maybe something. Yeah. We we have a lecturer that uh in charge on that. Thank you, thank you. Okay, welcome. Uh, hi, Mr. Arizal. I want to ask one question. Uh, I'm a guide, uh, actually, ex postdoc of uh, Dr. Naf Arizal. Okay. Okay, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, clear. Okay, all right. So, uh, my question is in failure analysis, I, I can see that. Um, you need uh, various expertise to uh, to analyze and uh, do some critical like report. And I saw that uh, electrical part they have a, like a chemistry uh, part, and also a physical mm -hmm. part. Uh, you need uh, also need a physicist who can uh, uh, correlate your failure with the reason why why uh, the device failure. So uh, my question is mm -hmm. in failure analysis. Uh, can you give uh, like uh, uh, which part is like, available? Uh, we have like electrical persons and material persons, and also uh, chemistry and uh, physics. Uh, I hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I can you hear. I, I yeah, think yeah, my yeah. my signal uh, kind of lost. So so my. Okay, my question is, uh, the most expertise in failure analysis, which uh, percent is more available? Is it uh, electrical percent or metro percent or uh, can you oh. define? Yeah, thank you. Okay. That's my... Uh... <clears throat> okay, I will say this one is uh, considered a gray, gray area because uh, you can see the complexity of the FA is consists of this, this element. So in case you have uh, one, one of that element that you are very strong, you are very welcome on FA because the rest uh, we can learn later during our on job training and also uh, on the field. So it's not a question we have a, we have a electronic background 40%, uh, chemistry 20%, physics 10%. Uh, for me, it's, uh, and it's, it's really hard to judge on the percent. But as long as you have uh, some uh, solid. Uh, background and one of them uh, you can be a fa and, uh, and, the, and the company can allocate you at the correct place <laughs> because fa uh, not not only for the product the essay just now i'm from the wafer level but also we have a, in the package level so the on the package level they're strength more to the material analysis so for the ic level i mean the highest strength is more on the electrical so the process. Uh, okay, so so okay. Uh, did did you agree that uh, for mm. failure analysis uh, position job, uh, mm. the company need multidiscipline uh, background uh, in order to help them to even for train or I, I think it uh, for the student uh, itself. Mm. Let's say uh, uh, when they have a, like a, a job. Uh, position that uh, the company offer. So mm. basically, uh, did you agree that they need to have a like a multi-discipline uh, knowledge or fundamental in order to compete with others? Yeah, it's a uh, completely agree with you. So it okay. can really help uh, to pass the first interview. Uh, okay, so thank okay. you. I think okay. uh, you okay. answer well. Thank you. Okay. So, any more question from all the participants? Uh, sorry, one last question. Oh, yeah. So, okay. okay uh, I see that your fellow. 
Dr. Mekat, you are mute. Sorry. Okay, sorry. Okay, okay so my last uh, question is, uh, I see that uh, failure analysis uh, job scope is they, they have like a step before you go to another failure analysis. You need to uh, see, you, you need to uh, have a, some a sort of idea what actually uh, the failure about. So my yeah. question is, let's say you need to do all the failure uh, analysis, what mm. is the minimum cost that the company need to 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 serve? Uh, just just estimation of the cost. Oh, okay. Uh. Interesting question. <clears throat> okay, for each analysis is uh, very unique. Can be very simple as EOS burn open back, and also can be very complicated. So the most complicated uh, that I face before is. Uh, the failure need to go until atomic level. We have to do the scanning capacitance microscopic. Then the estimation on the cost of the FA itself, one case is about 25k. If we do the costing, because uh, costing meaning that uh, the the what the cost of the machine and so the manpower, uh, the labor cost, because uh, this cost actually actually uh, been characterized. For each type of failure, I mean, uh, each type of sample, and for the our own costing and not for to, to be charged because to customer because FA is a part of the consider the uh, FOC for customer. It's like a service, and the so, cost is for the internal. Uh, okay. So what what what? Uh, my question is, uh, mm -hmm. can you give me uh, estimation cost? Uh, let's say you have a one IC failure that mm -hmm. you need to uh, do all the uh, failure tests. Uh, step and what what is the estimation for single product? Yeah. Yeah, just now I answer already. Twenty uh, five k. So twenty five k. The highest. I mean, the highest cost that uh, I done uh, that particular because I need a three month to complete that investigation. After a few hundred uh, probing and do the fifth cut DEM and whatever. At the end, need to do the highest, the scanning for the automatic level. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very okay. much. Uh, for additional, uh, for let's say for order, order uh, sample, uh, uh, estimation about two uh, k. If we sending the sample, I think to Singapore lah to do. Singapore lab. Because there's a servicing lab in Singapore that uh, welcoming for any sample uh, characterization. We the... also have the new huh? OJ, OJ tools in Pago, Parisan. Okay. Much That's cheaper. Good. Much uh, cheaper. 2,000 ringgit is uh, very expensive. La. We can oh. add 1,000. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we can PM the P. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, any more question? I maybe the last question from participants. Oh. Oh, okay, okay. There is one question in the chat. Is it true that most semiconductor company in Malaysia are owned by foreign country? From Raimi Pokin. Uh, yes. Because let's see. You can see my slide yet? Can. Yeah, we can. Okay. We can oh, see. Yeah. Okay, uh, none of them is uh, owned by Malaysia. <laughs> I mean, for local, even Singapore, but uh, most of them having the manufacturing, either back end testing or wafer fab in Malaysia. It's a good good thing. But they are still keeping their, on the R&D side. Uh. So, okay. Okay. So the core company is uh, most of it is uh, foreign mm. lah. So yeah. maybe some of the local, I think the local is on the supply vendor. Yeah, yeah. Always, yeah, it can be local, right? Mm. If you can find uh, some supply vendor it's from the supply chain, there must be some uh, some local company lah. In, yeah. In the, so that's why we have this uh, uh, semiconductor industry mm. in Malaysia. So maybe Raimi, later on, if you want to have become your own business 
businessman uh, so maybe you can you can jump into some of the supply chain lah i don't know if we hmm. can create F, our own fa lab in malaysia is, is it going to be a market or not <laughs> <laughs> for servicing eh? servicing yeah oh. mimos mimos offering that right ah uh, yeah yeah never never choose mimos for the testing from st or because you have your own oh. fa lab no oh, because uh If I left, uh, for for more 2021 until 2023, there's a very high progressive uh, transformation on the FLF. So we are observing a new high tech uh, equipment for each quarter to be in. So 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 I don't think we are going to source out <laughs> any uh, losses. Uh. Okay, okay. It's a very high confidential on the para. Oh uh, yeah yeah. Okay. But we, but we are welcome any collaboration from the what student or lecturer side lah. Okay, okay. In case it match our needs. Thank you. Okay. Okay, I think this is the last question that we can take. Salam, Mr. Farisa. What is it like to be a FA engineer? What is? What is it like to be a FA like engineer? Be. Yeah. Actually, this one need a very passion <laughs> in terms of career because it's not a overnight uh, career that can can be what working in the short term. It's a long way of process. Because I I also not not imagine that one day I become FA. Even my name is FA, but. <laughs> It's a long a process, uh, and then uh, also need support from the surrounding and, and then opportunity also. Okay, and how big is the FA team at ST? Oh, it's quite big and getting bigger. Okay. <laughs> so, so there is a potential recruitment lah, at ST. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah. Okay, so this is good no, for the students. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> Okay, okay. Thank you, uh, for okay. thank you, Mr. Farisa, for answering all the question from the participants. So, ladies and gentlemen, finally we come to the end part of our presentation, and we would like to say thanks again to Mr. Farisa for the very informative and very interesting talk. And I believe this presentation will be the beneficial to our participant in present and future. So before we end, I would like to call every participant to switch on your camera and we will have the photograph session. So yeah. Please, okay, don't uh, forget to fill in the form as well for yeah. the attendance. Okay, let's take the picture. Okay, anyone who want to, yeah. Okay, one, two, three, smile. Okay, one, two, three, one more. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, one, two, three. All right. Okay, thank you all. Thank you for joining us today and thank you again for Mr. Farisa. Yeah. Okay. In the link link for the attendance. Yeah, we already uh give the link re in the repair. chat. Box. I, I didn't need to repair because I cannot access. I can try to. So anything else? Okay. Okay, you now thank you, Farisa. Okay, okay, bye. Thank you. Um. <coughs> Ada problem eh dengan link tu. Okey. Cuba try balik. Okey. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So the latest one is okay. Okey tak? Boleh tak semua? Okay. 
Okey tak? Wahidur, Wahidur Rahman. Ah, okey, okey. Alright. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you all. Don't forget to uh, fill the attendance form because we only have 26 respondents, 29, but we have around 80 participants just now. <laughs>